Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today is a very special day because we're going to be talking about this little device here which is indeed a 3D scanner. Now this was sent to me by Creelty and I'm going to be showing you guys just a small little example today. We're not going to be doing anything too technical. Just showing you how simple this device is to use and how good the results are. So you can actually see over here are just some of the results I got. Just took minutes to scan with this and so far I'm really impressed. So keep watching the video and this might actually be something you'd want to look into yourself. So let's get into it. So the package itself is nice and neat, very well packed, and it's got a pretty good weight to it, even though it's a bit of a smaller package. So you can see here, very easy to open, it's got a little tab. So I'm just gonna grab a knife, meat cleaver will do, and I open that up, and now we can pop the box. So let's see what is inside. So inside of here, we have a little case, so I'm gonna take that out, and let's see what's inside the little case. Pop it open and we can see here it comes with an instruction manual at the top which is really cool and uh, we'll go through those details in a little bit but inside of here you can see we have this uh, thing which is the battery pack with the different um, charging ports and then you seem to have this little tripod here which is really handy so you can kind of fold that out and that's going to be part of the apparatus that holds the scanner. So let's see here, this seems to be the scanner itself. Neatly packaged in this plastic, I'm gonna open it up. And I gotta say, this has a really nice weight to it. It doesn't feel that cheapish. It's a nice kind of solid build. So there it is. That, assuming that's gonna go on top of that. And then we have a few more parts. This looks like some sort of swivel apparatus that can kind of make you tilt the scanner. Pretty cool, nice and solid as well. And here you can see just a standard phone clamp, which is where you can put your phone in if that's what you're gonna be using for the scanner. Now inside of here is a zipper, so I'm gonna open that up, and we can see this is where all the cabling is in. And um, so one of them seems to be a C-type to USB cable. And then this one here seems to be the same thing as well. This one's probably the one that connects to your phone. So that's what's inside of this um, package. So let's take these components, put them together and start scanning. So I'm gonna quickly just mention the software in a little bit more detail. So I'm actually downloading it from the Creelty um, downloads page. I've downloaded a zip folder and I'll quickly show what it looks like. You can see over here is the zip folder. What you're gonna simply do is right click and you can go ahead and extract it. And once that file is extracted, you'll have these um, two files in here. You can just click on this one here. I'm right clicking on it. I'm using a Windows operating system here, but I'm gonna go run as administrator and just go ahead and click yes. And then it's just a very simple installation process. And then you just click on finish. And now it's launching the app. Now you're gonna see when this app runs for the first time, you're gonna get this guide for, for beginners, which is really, really simple. And it kind of just takes you through a kind of like little mini course here, just on what are the best ways to approach it. So here are the recommended objects that they suggest you should scan. You can see here it's ideal for medium um, and large size object scanning. If you are new to 3D scanning, please try some objects which are easy to be scanned. Okay, so you can scan larger object with, objects with it, but there are a recommended kind of beginner objects, things that you could more easily manage. And that's what they're kind of recommending here. You can see the size recommendations are something like, you know, 150 by 150 by 150 mill millimeters. So that's squared or something like that's 20 by 20 by 20 centimeters. And um, you can, it says your scanning objects that are too large or too small could be challenging. And I have found that the smaller you go, it is def definitely more challenging, but it can actually scan pretty well. I've scanned um, objects that are like eight centimeters by eight centimeters pretty well, like, uh, like a fruit or something. Um, and then it says here things that are not suitable. So transparent, reflective, um, things that have a lot of holes in them, very thin objects, I found that as well. Uh, Non-stationary animals, obviously, because they're moving. So it's just very handy things here that you can read through. And uh, then there's the next page. And over here, it's a nice uh, troubleshooting and tips kind of thing. And I think this is really good here because you're gonna probably run into one of these issues at some point and having this kind of nice list here, it's talking about what you can do on unsmooth surfaces. Uh, over here, it talks about some of the treatments you can put on surfaces to make them, um, like for example, scanning spray can see over here to help with things that are too reflective or transparent. Um, flat or regular solid color objects. These are things that could be hard because they don't have um, 
a lot of texture detail, so there's not a lot of tracking information. So you can maybe rely on things like stickers, um, all these sort of cool little handy tips that you can look at. So that's interesting. Let's go to the next one quickly. How to choose proper scanning settings. Now this is um, something you'll have to look into uh, and experiment with, but generally um, something like with the geometry mode, which we'll talk about in a bit, um, for objects with like really rich geometry, something like maybe carved objects, but there's a lot of structural detail, geometry might be a really good setting, but where you have something that's more flat um, and irregular, but it has a vivid graphic pattern, so a lot of texture on the surface, texture mode might be the way you want to go. And um, it gives you some information here. Objects with rich geometries and textures, geometry mode recommended. Objects without rich geometries, just like I mentioned, these are the ones where you'd want to use texture mode. So very interesting, something to keep in mind. And let's just quickly go to the initial setup guide and tips. Um, here it's just telling you, now this is um, something that's very simple. You just plug the device in. I've already done this. It's just plug and play. You just plug it in, it connects to your computer. Um, once you have this installed, it'll automatically detect it. You can read over here. Um, just one of the main things to keep in mind is a USB port without sufficient power may not be able to run this device. So it's recommended that you use a USB 3.0 port or something higher than that. So that's very information, very important to take that um, information there. And over here with the step two, it tells you here, once again, this kind of is what we looked at previously, but you want to make sure you have the proper settings selected for what you're working with. So it's talking here once again about geometry or texture, but that's already been covered in the previous bit. And over here, it just takes you through what sort of process you want to use. Uh, but you'll see this later on as we go into the video. So I'm going to just go forward. And the last thing here, which is really cool, they have some support stuff. You can scan the QR codes or use the links here and they have all sorts of tutorials, downloads and stuff. So they've really put in some effort into making sure that uh, the beginners have something to work with here and have the right information. And you're about to see just how simple this um, app here is to use anyway. So let's close this. So when it comes to running this, it's really simple. You can see here for me, I'm gonna be using my laptop as my device. Over here, you can see I just have the cable plugged into my laptop and then it's going onto my desk where I have the Creelty Ferret 3D scanner here and it stands up really nicely. So you can see here as well, I have a plate and you're probably wondering what the plate is for. And I found that instead of having to buy like a fancy turntable, you can just use a plate. It's very simple as long as it turns and then you can put something on it like a can. In this case, I'm using a paper cap. It really depends on what you're scanning, but I found this works really good. So we're gonna go ahead and click on scan. And then you're gonna go over, you can see there's some different options here. What I'm gonna go with under the feature is the main thing we're gonna focus on here is texture. So the geometry is really good for stuff that has a lot of like surface detail. But if you've got something that's got a lot of like texture on it, um, it's good to go with texture. And I found personally the texture works quite well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on texture. And um, all of these other ones, I'm just gonna leave as default. The object here I would say is probably medium for this. So I'm gonna leave it at that. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on a new scan. So immediately you can see that it's too close to the um, scanner here. So it says move further. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually move it a little bit further and it's gonna show you this kind of optimal distance here. And for the most part, you're gonna kind of try and keep it there. So once you have an optimal distance, you can see over here that it also looks nice and green. You can kind of see an outline of the figure. You're gonna go ahead and click on the start button. And it's now at this point where I'm gonna start very slowly turning the little figure here. And like I said, it's on a plate, just to simplify things a little bit. And you can see here, as long as it's kind of in that kind of optimal green distance, and you get a nice track, you should start to see kind of like a 3D uh, little um, like dot point of your statue or whatever you're scanning building up in the viewport. So you can see all of these little dots. They're starting to make what we can recognize as a 3D uh, little structure here. So we're gonna try and keep that the whole time in this nice optimal range. And try not to go too fast. Just take your time. So you can see here, I've moved it a little bit too far away. So I'm gonna move it, or I've moved it a bit too close. So I'm gonna move it a bit further away. Maybe again, it could be a little bit tricky, but just keep at it, slowly turning. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna grab a book and place it under the scanner to get the head a little bit higher. And I'm not moving the statue out of the way. And now I'm just gonna scan it, turn it around again, and that's gonna help me get a bit more of a higher angle. And 
for now I'm happy with this because I just want the top section of the statue so I'm going to go ahead and click on pause and then we can go to complete and it's going to ask us if we want to do this we're going to say yes and then you got these options here so you can click to proceed further or you can optimize the settings what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to click on the top option here it's going to ask me again do I want to proceed I'm going to say yes and now it's going to optimize So you can see it's finished optimizing. It's now doing the remeshing part of this. And so far it hasn't actually been too long. It's doing this pretty quickly. And up here you can kind of see it's showing you the faces and the, or the frames here and the points. And here you can see it's now put in the colors. And this did a fantastic job. I gotta say this scanner has really impressed me so far. And the reason we have some of this missing information here is not because the scanner is not capable. It's just because I didn't put it at a high enough angle. This is just kind of to give you guys a rough idea just how quickly you can get a pretty good model. And you can look here at the actual um, base mesh and just look at the details that it's captured here. And like I said, this could be done a lot better if you give it more frames. And I just gave it a few frames in this case. You can definitely go to a lot higher frames. And in this case, my arm got here in the way as well. But even then, it's gotten rid of most of the garbage here and given us what we primarily want. And it's even mapped the color onto there. And because we had the light source kind of coming from one side, but we kept the scan face that way, it all kind of has the same sort of lighting with that technique, which kind of works really well. We have this kind of like um, diffuse texture all over, which we can easily import into a 3D software and use for our model. So let's try something else. So what I'm going to do now is the exact same thing we did before. I am speeding this up, but what I'm doing is I have this on my plate. I'm rotating it around. I'm getting a scan and then I'm putting a book underneath the scanner, just lifting a little bit higher just to get a bit of a different elevation and a different angle. And then once again, I'm rotating and rotating till I see all of those little uh, red bits kind of filled in. And I get a kind of like a nice looking model here with a lot of um, filled in topology. And now you can see it's all done. So I'm gonna process it and it's doing all of the calculations. Once again, this is sped up, but you can see overall, even though it's a lot more frames, it's not really taking that long. It didn't take this, this long compared to something like photogrammetry for, for example. And here you guys can see just the amount of detail that I've captured with the second scan. So I did a few more frames this time and I got some different angles, so higher and lower. And you can see it's just absolutely incredible. I gotta say that I'm pretty impressed with the scanner and so far, um, the software has been the thing that impresses me the most because it's so simple to use. So uh, I'm really loving the results that I'm getting here. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to show you guys how you can import these models into Blender. So if you want to export this, what you want to do is you want to go over here to the export button. I'm going to choose somewhere on my desktop. I'm just going to call this statue. And then we're going to come here and change it to OBJ. And then let's go save. And now it's exporting it as an OBJ file, and it'll also automatically export the textures along with that. Okay, so now it's complete. What we're gonna do is, you can see here it's on my desktop. I've got these two files. So I've got a texture and I've got the statue. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go open up Blender. So once you're inside of Blender, you're just gonna go to File. You're gonna go down to Import, and you're gonna choose the OBJ file format. In this case, it's on my desktop. I'm gonna click on there. Then I'm gonna click on OBJ. And now you can see it's being imported. So it, sometimes it comes in a little bit weird like this. All you have to do is just select it, move it to where you want it. And you can also go control A and apply the location. And that's gonna put the origin point inside of Blender more where you want it. And then you can more simply rotate the object. So in this case, I wanna see it in my front of a graphic, which is correct. And uh, I'm gonna just add in a cube here so I can see the scale. So I'll put the cube next to it. You can see this is quite large. So I'm just gonna scale it way down like so and until it's a little bit more reasonable size. I'm gonna go something, maybe something like that. I'm gonna go Control A and I'm gonna apply that scale. And uh, that's pretty simple. So I might just as well Control A and apply the rotation as well. Control A and apply the location one more time. So you have the origin point where we want it. So you can see here from the right of the graphic, we could probably move it forward a bit more. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go Control A, apply the location. Um, at this point, you're just placing it where you want it in your scene. You're making sure the scale is all right, fixing your rotation issues. And uh, yeah, but other than that, it's super simple. That just took us a few seconds to pretty much import this scan into Blender. And now you can go over to your materials. And uh, if you actually go 
um, Z and you go material preview, it should already have imported your texture for you. In this case, you can see it's done that as well, which is really awesome. So this scanner does exactly what it says it does. And it's really impressive. The amount of detail you're able to capture, the amount of things you can do with it, I would definitely say it's been fantastic. So in conclusion, would I recommend this free scanner? I think I would. I think it's really good. And um, I think it's pretty well priced considering the quality. And you could probably do the same thing with something like photogrammetry. But I think with this, it definitely does speed up the process. And I think it gives you an extra level of detail that would be hard to capture with something like uh, photogrammetry, for example, or maybe even a scanner in your phone. So pretty impressed and definitely check out the link in the description below if you want to actually maybe invest in something like this for your own personal 3D workflow. So I'll see you guys next time for another video.